Hello, it's me, Jeremy, from Red Breeds Recording. Shh, we're being very sneaky today. Today, we are going to explore the magical world of free sample libraries on archive.org. I'm not sure what the legality of this is, but I do know that there is some very, very cool stuff on there that uh, I don't think anybody knows about. And uh, today, I'm going to show you that it's there and what to do with it, because we're going back. We're going back to the 2000s, early 2000s. I guess we're still in the 2000s. Uh, we're going back to the late 90s. We're going back to when sample CDs were a little bit more, let's say, stolen content. <laughs> and I'm specifically talking about some of the classics, like the old zero G data files, some of the stuff from the early Vengeance CDs, stuff like that. And uh, in a lot of cases, these are actual CDs. It's gonna be something that we're gonna have to deal with. So anyways, point of this video, there's some amazing sample content out there for free that uh, you have no excuse but to go get and deal with and have fun with. And that's what we're doing today. So let's go. What do you need? to make this work. Well, the first thing you need is an internet browser, and then you need to go into that internet browser and type archive.org, and then you end up here at archive.org. So what do I wanna look for in order to make this work? I wanna look for 0-G, 0-G, there we go, yes. Uh, we have now some results. So this one, this Deepest India one, is uh, one of them. Um, and you can see when I hovered over that, we got sample and sample patch CDs. So let's go ahead and click on that. And oh boy, here we go. Here's the shit. So this first one here, this 90s old school sample CDs, this is what you're gonna want to grab for sure. This is everything, all the good stuff. All, I mean, almost all the good stuff. This is just, oh, there's a part two. Oh my God, holy moly. Okay, so these are really big, uh, 343 gigabytes, for the uh, second one. So uh, I guess we probably want to grab the second one. So what can we get? Well, we can get it as a torrent. And I think, let's see, can we get it as a, okay, so you can also download them as individual uh, zip files. So this is just absolutely crazy, right? Like, look at all this stuff, just waiting for you to touch with your, uh, with your hands. So I'm gonna grab, um, let's see, which ones do I have? I don't know if I have Ecstatic Goldmine 3. Um, and I don't know if I have world, uh, zero G world-class breaks. Um, the data files is a zero G data files are what you really want. Um, those are sort of the pinnacle of the sample collections that, uh, I believe, um, you will hear so much stuff from if you, uh, gr grew up in that era, uh, listening to music, um, from pop to everything like they're all there. So these three zero G data files, uh, are the ones that I would grab. There's a few things I want to show you about this, um, that, uh, you'll have to deal with once we get them. So I just need to have a few of these downloaded in order to, uh, show you this. Yeah, baby. Um, I mean, I, like I said, a lot of this stuff, not all of it, but uh, a lot of the zero G data file stuff, um, it's obviously ripped from other records. So it's like a commercial sample collection that was ripped from other stuff. And I feel like a lot of the vengeance stuff is as well. When you listen to like their, uh, their little cuts, their little synth cuts and stuff like that, their little vocal cuts, they're clearly chops from other things that have been just like truncated. So uh, like I say, like while the legality of what we're doing right here is question mark, um, the legality of the original releases is also question mark. So uh, do two wrongs make a right? Sometimes. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and look at some of these. Uh, we have three here. One is a classic zip, the other ones are uh, seven zips. So um, I should be able to, with seven zip installed right here, just extract these to uh, you know, their individual folders. If you don't have seven zip, you're gonna need it or anything that can actually deal with uh, .7z files. It's just another archive form. So uh, you also might run into this bin and queue uh, setup here. This is actually um, another form of audio CD backup. Um, like I said, a lot of these were audio CDs. So we need to get these into some format that uh, we can um, basically get at the contents. So there's a couple ways we can do that. I'm going to use this any to ISO program here. We don't actually need to use the program itself as long as we've installed the context menus. So I can convert this or extract it. Probably extracting is what we want to do. There it is. 
Yeah, yeah. So here we are back at having the individual CD tracks. So that's one way that you can get around where you see bin and queue. I know probably a lot of you don't know what the hell these are, and that's fair. But uh, anything that will turn them into an ISO or extract their information will get you to the WAV files. The issue with these, and I'm not sure if this will be... Oh, Ecstatic Goldmine 3 is actually already chopped up. That's extremely good. Hell yeah. Let's look at these. Okay, Elab uh, ecstasy files of uh, files of house is good to go. Let me show you the problem that you're going to run into with some of these. The original first three uh, zero G data files. These are the super super classics. And the issue is, you can see here how it says track, 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 track. What they actually did back in the day was the sample CDs were actually audio CDs, like Red Book audio CDs. So you would get this file that would be just a collection individual samples in an audio track. So this would go into an audio CD player and you would play it back into your sampler, which is just kind of wild. Um, so how do you deal with this? Well, uh, there are a couple different ways to do it. Um, you can do it in live if you want. Oh, you know what you can do in live? That'll make that easier here. Let's try this. Uh, can I do this? So I'm gonna turn warp on and off. I'm gonna put a warp marker at the beginning of each one of these. This is tedious, by the way. I have spent months working on um, my copies of the Zero-G data file and Ecstatic Goldmine uh, sample packs because uh, I needed to do this. I needed to chop them up. I needed to organize them into folders um, that actually made sense. And it's very rewarding. Like I have a very cool sample collection that's like super, super, you know, not really common these days, um, but it takes a lot of time. So any tools that you have to do any kind of like chopping or slicing um, of this stuff and then uh, batch file renames are gonna be really, really good for you. And I'll show you a couple tools for that. So now that we have this uh, warp marked, I can go right click and I can say slice to new MIDI track. Here I'll need to uh, pick warp marker for my slices and I will need to uh, go into, it doesn't matter which sampler version I use, just any of the sampler versions. So I'll say sampler beat offset and hit okay. So now that we have our sampler here, each one of these is, see how down the bottom left, you can see that little slice. So this is gonna get us the beginning of these sliced up, which is good. So now what I can do to get these into individual WAV files is select them all, right click and say uh, crop sample. And now it will crop each one of these into an individual slice, right? And that's really, really useful uh, because now you can see if you right click on any one of these and say show in browser, uh, here they are, here's our slices, right click on them and say show in explorer, here they are right here. So if I wanted to take this to the next level and start organizing these things, um, I would take these files and I would create like a working directory um, somewhere on my computer. Um, and then I would uh, paste these in here. Now um, I would want to uh, rename these. And this is where a batch file renamer comes into great, great help. Um, this is one of the unsung heroes of being a electronic musician, especially if you have like different samplers um, that all need different types of files or different naming conventions like Morphogene or something like that. So I'm gonna pull these in here. This is a free thing called bulk rename utility. I use it every day, literally. I don't really care about the order of these. I, I just need to rename them. Um, so I'm gonna go over to the remove. I'm gonna remove all of this and I'm going to say uh, add prefix. I'll say zero G data file 01 drum loop. And now I need to iterate these because if I just hit rename right now, they'd all have the same name and that's not allowed in computers. So I'll go over to numbering. I'll say suffix, pad it out right here by putting a space. And there you go. If I rename these now, I have, come on, rename them. Yeah, there we go. They have been renamed. <laughs> there they are right there. So how do we deal with the end of that, right? How do we deal with the stuff that's at the end, that silence, if we wanted to make these more acidized loops or more like loop loops. So one way that we can do this is using audition. And while this process does work, it's, it's again, slow and kind of laborious. So uh, if you have something that can do something like this in a batch format, like you can save it as a preset and then run it on everything, that would be your best bet. So what we're gonna do here is go to diagnostics. I'm gonna choose delete silence from the dropdown here. I'm gonna say find levels. I'm gonna say scan and I'm gonna delete all. So watch what happens when we do this. So it just got rid of that end, that, that gap that we had at the end. Let's go ahead and loop it now and listen to whether or not it's a good loop. 
sounds pretty good. So it, it's laborious, right? Like, but um, again, it, it is worth it. So if you have like, you know, an office job where you have access to a computer and you can install your own software on there, just do this in the background, uh, you know, like steal, steal time from your employers, uh, always. <laughs> so if you have a file like this, where it's ah! less transient, yeah. Yeah, and more uh, individual uh, little hits like this. I mean, you can still do the warp method here, but what I want to try is I want to try doing this in Recycle, uh, which is a ancient program. Um, my propeller heads to uh, chop up things. God, I hate this program so much. Okay, let's turn up the sensitivity and see what we can get. So you can see it's starting to chop a little too much, but we can come in here and delete the extra slices like this. Oops. Put you right there. Everybody over there. Get on up, get into it. Yeah, you can you can tell that these are not legal. <laughs> and that's what's kind of fun about them. All right, so now we're going to go to file export. Um, number of bars doesn't matter. Uh, just put whatever you want. Now if we navigate to that folder, we will find that yeah, baby! We will find that we have uh, our little chops here, uh, which is really great. I would still want to strip the silence uh, out of the ends of these. A lot of my samplers have like memory considerations. So this is just dead nothing right here that I want to get rid of. So anything that you can find that will do that will be very, very useful to you. So that is how I approach uh, dealing with ones that aren't just automatically good to go. Um, most of them are not automatically good to go. So keep that in mind. It's a lot of work uh, to get these up to the standard that you expect from modern loop or uh, sample CDs. But you're also basically crate digging in the history of electronic music, which is frankly pretty damn cool. Um, so which ones would I grab from here? Well, I can put some links in the description. Um, I would grab these two. I grab the Vengeance. Uh, this Norman Cook skip to my loop is fantastic. If you like drum and bass, these old school uh, AMG drum and bass ones are really, really good. The Cold Cuts Kleptomania is really, really good. Uh, well, this one you should get just for the cover. Look at that. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah, Ecstatic Goldmine is another one of the really, really classic ones. Everyone actually should pirate BT. It is important that you pirate BT uh, because he has turned into an NFT clown. Yeah, here it is. There's three volumes of this and they're all really good. I'm not sure where the, oh, wait, this is all three of them. Elab is another one of those really, really classic sample uh, creators and I have a whole bunch of this stuff I really, really love. And I use the drum loops in this all the time. This is just like so much good stuff on here. Just, I've shown you how to get to the, the list. You from there can go and find what you want. And hopefully I've given you the tools here to deal with them when they are uh, not chopped up properly. So yeah, uh, that has been a little uh, dive into the dream of the 90s and early 2000s of, uh, of sample CDs and sample loops and all that stuff. There's a lot of history here. There's a lot of really amazing stuff that um, I personally love to use with modern production techniques. I love to mix and match these old weird samples with modern production techniques. It's just, it's just my it's my jam. So uh, I hope you have fun with these. Um, I hope this doesn't get anyone in trouble. What the heck is this? <laughs> Everything but the girl interactive walking wounded and wrong demo C CDs for Mac and PC. Holy crap, that's so cool. <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have fun, make some music, um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.